So here's an example of graphing uh, quadratic functions, excuse me, uh, trigonometric functions, and we're going to uh, use it from a table of values, okay? Uh, now notice how the x-axis is in terms of pi, okay, which could happen sometimes, but uh, we can still use that, but let's go ahead and make them decimals, okay? So if I were to make them decimals, we'll see what we get for our answers. All right, so... First thing I'm going to do is make a table of values, so x and y, okay. And the first values that are going to go on there are, okay, a usual cosine graph starts at x equals 0, so we'll put 0, okay. But then I need to put where it ends. And this graph is going to end somewhere different because the angle, x or theta, is being divided by 4, okay. So theta over 4 needs to be equal to the the usual ending place. Okay, the usual ending place for a cosine graph is 2 pi. But it's going to change because this means that the graph is going to be stretched a little bit because I have to get rid of dividing by 4 by multiplying by 4. Okay, and theta equals 8 pi. Okay, so just for the sake of it, let's go ahead and leave 8 pi. All right, so if it's 8 pi, that standing place, halfway in between 0 and 8 pi, hopefully you guess is 4 pi. And then 2 pi would go here, and 6 pi would go here. Right, if we can use pi, that's fine, but I can do it as decimals later if you'd like. Okay? So here we go. If we type in on our calculators, uh, let's put in 0. Okay? So you do... 0 divided by 4, which hopefully you get 0. And cosine of 0, if you plug it in and it's your calculator's radians, you should get 1. Then you would multiply times 4, so times 4 equals 4. 4 minus 1 equals 3. So hopefully if you plug in 0, you should get 3. Okay. Alright, now with uh, 2 pi, you can actually plug that in straight up. So do cosine and then type in 2 pi divided by 4. And you should get an answer of 0, which is, that's correct. So plug in 0, 0 times 4 is 0, minus 1 gives me negative 1. Okay, let's plug in 4 pi. Again, you could just literally plug it in straight up. So cosine of 4 pi divided by 4 should give you negative 1. And then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Okay, if you plug in 6 pi, because you know cosine graph repeats itself, it's going to go back up. So it's going to be negative 1, and 8 pi is going to go back to 3. Okay, so if we graph it, 0 comma 3. At 2 pi, it's at negative 1. At 4 pi, it's at negative 5. At 6 pi... It's at negative 1 again, and at 8 pi, it's at back at 3. So my graph would look something like this. <clears throat> then, let's go ahead and prove it on Desmos real quick, because we can do that. Okay, I'm going to go here, come over here. Very good. Let's actually just get rid of that and start over. Okay, so the equation was 4, I'm going to come over here and type in cosine, cosine of, it was theta, but we can just put x, x divided by 4, and then we subtracted 1. Okay, let me zoom out here, I zoomed really far in for some reason. Okay, there we go. So, if we go back here, that's at 0, 3, okay. 5.27 comma 0, but if we come here to negative 1, it's about at negative 1, right? Because we plugged in we plugged in 4 pi, okay? So if we actually do 4 times pi, okay? So 4 times pi is 12.56. Oh, it's divided by 2, so, so excuse me, it's 2 pi. So it's 2 pi 
which is about 6.28. And so my graph is pretty close right there, right? Negative 1, 6.28 would be pretty close. Let me zoom in there to see how close I can really get. Okay. So 5 is right there. And... Oh, 6.28, excuse me. 6.28 and negative 1 would be about there, right? So it's pretty close. So anyway, the Desmos is just used to make sure you know how to graph or type it in correctly because we're going to be using it later. But that is how you would graph a cosine function and again using the table and again calculating all those answers and how you do it.